All right, so what's the cheapest bike on Amazon that doesn't look like any bike? It's this thing right here, the SMLRO Mingji, or Mingjai. I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but here's the box. So you can see the type of box. It actually comes pre-folded in this box, and you can see right here, so I'm a little, at this point in time, a little worried that uh, there might be some damage. Kind of walk through, let you see. And this will be in comparison to uh, what I've got, my other bikes there on the side. So you'll see, hopefully give you a little perspective. I didn't put it like right next to a bike, but it's actually fairly compact. Those two straps, I'm able to pick up the box. The box itself rated on um, UPS as uh, 70 pounds. The bike itself, I believe, is 65 in total. Although when I kind of put it all together, I actually think the uh, weight was less than that. So, in any event, let's open this thing up and get moving on the unboxing. Okay, it's nicely bubble wrapped all throughout. Uh, it has uh, zip ties, keeping everything tightly together. The entire bike is assembled. The wheels are already attached. The only thing that's detached are the handlebars. And that's actually, um, it's still somewhat attached. It has the cables still on it, right? You have to be careful when you're, as you're taking it apart. And then uh, essentially just put the stem of the handlebars down. And that right there is the uh, electrical plug that you plug into the battery pack. Give you kind of a top level view. It's a very comfortable seat, by the way. Okay, we'll get on to the uh, next angles here. Okay, so while everybody's having breakfast upstairs, I'm down here filming this thing. So what I did is by myself, as you can see, I tipped over or tipped to the side the uh, the box itself, which really made it a lot easier to get this thing out. Again, it's um, it's folded, so it's all like everything's attached, and they've got it nicely zip tied, so nothing goes flying off. You can see the handlebars right there would be the only thing you kind of have to worry about. Uh, so. Although a little awkward, it's not impossible at all to, uh, to do this with just, uh, with just yourself, right? Pretty easy. All right, so now we're gonna fast forward through time because unlike my very first unboxing video like two and a half years ago, uh, we're gonna blow through this piece here. Save you guys a little time. All right, so while the bike is standing up on the side there, I'm gonna show you what's left at the base of the box. So it comes with these really, I think, very nice and light plastic um, fenders. Also comes with the power charger, which there's a very interesting picture of what appears to be a scientist. But uh, it's, it's a light charger, has a, a LED on it, which tells you when it's full, it turns green. It's very logical, and yellow when it's charging. Next we have this box. By now you can pick up the excitement that's going on as I rip into this box. Um, yeah, the battery. So everything's ready to go. You just have to put the battery pack, really it's the remove the zip ties, um, put the handlebars in place, get the battery pack uh, attached. And actually what I ended up doing is I, I charged the battery separately first and then I attached it later. Uh, but it comes with this really cool bag. It's a very thick battery, actually. It looks like a, I don't know, a C4 pack. <laughs> Never seen one of those, but uh, except for in the movies. But uh, yeah, so it's it's a pretty decent size uh, battery here. Let's show you the uh, specs on it. And then it's got the cable and everything already wired and ready to go. So the only thing I would say there's a little a little weird, but it's like it's okay, right? This it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. But it's got this like white goop that's dried uh, for the batteries, and uh, I've filmed and gone away apparently. But um, but yeah, that's the only thing. It's it's a little odd, but it's not ridiculous. Uh, totally understandable. And then it's easy to kind of charge, and I'll show you that later. All right. So here I'm just kind of showing you the layout of everything that was in the box, some directions, and uh, this showing the the shifter uh, in in uh, four different languages. So. Uh, really haven't gotten into that too much. 
We'll get more into this later on, but just again, just to show you everything uh, for 550 bucks, pretty cool. And here's the bike standing up, kind of, at an angle. So again, uh, here we can see the quality and care that went into the packaging of this bike. They just didn't slap it together, throw it in a box and ship it out. Which again, depending on what your theory is on cheap bikes, uh, you might think it would be that. But you can see they protected most, actually most of the metal pieces, like even the forks, they protected both sides. Everything has foam around it, the wheels, um, where the axles are, are, are well protected. The seat is covered. Everything, uh, the controller is also well well um, protected by foam. I'm gonna give you a detailed view here. Kind of, well, a close-up view anyway. And now we're gonna fast forward again. And cue the real estate agent telling me the market's doing really well. Morning. Hey there. Now here was a big shocker. Look at the quality of these handle grips. Really nice. It's got like a machined aluminum, it feels like, with rubber rubberized handles. That was definitely a, a complete surprise. Oh, boom, magic. It's up like that. Actually, it's quite easy to deploy. I'll show you that later. Um, however, one quality ding is right here. I'm going to freeze this. The pedals. I've had pedals like this before. Um, they're really cool. Unfortunately, they're made of mostly plastic, so that's, they'll end up breaking. And when you, you do kind of put your weight on them, you can feel them bend a little. So I'm probably going to swap these out for higher quality ones. But not a big deal. They'll work for now. I'm going to keep using them until I get irritated with them. This is another item that I thought was a little odd, but it's functional. All right, now get this out of the way. Now, the other thing that's a little odd is this. The, the neck here of the handlebars is quite thin. So I'm not sure how long this is going to last, but it is metal. Now, right here, it looks like it was a little bit of rust, but actually, it's just, a, um, as I scrape it off, it appears to be a, a glue of some kind. So, not the end of the world. And the reason that handle thing is there is it, it's like a quick release. It lets you, like, lock the thing in place, and so far, it looks like it's working as intended. So, you can kind of wind that thing around, and then, boom, you, you place it down, and it's out of the way. Again, because the intent is this is a folding bike, and then you'll be folding it and then this little thing comes off. Again, another protecting device. They did a great job there. Give you kind of a walk through. Tires are good quality as well. Uh, the shifter Shimano, it's got the gears right there. And it has a uh, front derailleur here, and there's a rear derailleur. Giving you a total of 21 speeds, uh, which does come in handy. Um, it's surprisingly easy to pedal as well. So that actually works out very nicely. Um, I also, let's see, oh yeah, I still haven't fully unpacked this. Uh, that's the controller, Ta -da. which my wife pointed out, and I agree, looks like a sunglass case holder. But again, doesn't look like an e-bike, just kind of like, huh, like some sort of extra carrying location. Let's give you a close-up of the uh, handlebar grip. Again, looks like it's um, aluminum machine Oh, by the way, that's a battery indicator. So you, that little keyhole down below uh, is where you put the key in, you turn it on, and it tells you the battery level indicator. And that's without pushing the computer M thing, which I'm gonna unravel here. You're gonna see that. Uh, there's a little M that once you turn the key, again, you see the little battery indicator, and then here on the computer, to start it up, you have to push and hold the M, and then that um, activates the bike. Again, keep in mind, $550. Look at how well they've braided the cables. It's not just like a hot mess in the front. It just looks all weird. Uh, they actually 
put some time, energy, and effort, and it's braided all the way down and through. So it, again, just has a nice clean look. Doesn't look super electric bike-ish. It's a little, it, it looks well designed. I mean, I give these guys high props. And there you've got a, a mount to put like your bike lock, which is what I did. I, I just mounted that actually today. Um, but uh, yeah, very capable. It's not in a weird position. Some of the e-bikes, they put them in strange areas. That's a very logical spot right there. All right, let's check out the seat. It's very cushy. It seems to be well made. Uh, it's got some good padding. It's leaning forward a little too much. So I'm, I'm going to actually adjust that to where it's kind of leaning more back instead of forward. Uh, there is the mount, although that part didn't work. I'll tell you that later. The rear fender thing didn't mount right. It's either the angle or they didn't give me the right bolt for the screw, but it's easily fixed, right? You can put a different screw in there. I used a couple zip ties for now, but this is the bike right here in its full glory. Got a couple of things I have to remove and it's good to go. Okay, so now let's get that front light mounted. Um, this was also another thing that was really cool. Um, I was impressed with the quality. That is a threaded bolt. Uh, there's also the nut from the back that uh, attaches, but the light itself, I don't know why I'm having a hard time describing this, I apologize. <laughs> Sidebar. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's it's really well done and it's, it's, a, it's a clean, I don't know, again, I don't know why I'm focusing on this so much, but it's, it's impressive. It's well machined. Is any of this making sense? So, um, yeah. And then I, once you screw that through, then you just tighten the nut to the back. Uh, it's Sunday. It's time for me to, time for me to get ready for my real job for the week. It's gonna be great. This is really gonna be great. Um, haven't tried the light yet. I'll look at that tonight. I might do a little little demo if I have time. I always say that and I never do, but uh, anywho, here I'm, uh, I'm tightening the light up and it works well. There is, I think, an additional thing, really, and I've got like the worst Allen wrench set, by the way. <laughs> it's just, oh. I need to invest in some decent tools. I like the laundry basket in the background and I've got a hose that's too short to properly wash a car so I have to like pull a car in really weird and I, I have a longer hose up above in the balcony but I'm too lazy to go fishtail that thing down. Actually they should swap them. It never dawned on me. Anyway, I, I truly apologize. This is uh, just, I got totally sidetracked here. Focus. Okay, so the light. Now, the funny part is the light is just, it's straight up into people's eyes. So, but it's its really nice. It's like this aluminum thing. You can kind of bend it down or actually there's even a little um, screw uh, where the light is attached. And that you can, you can just uh, focus it down. You don't actually have to bend it. So don't do that. Okay, so after popping a few bubbles, uh, now we're going to attach the front fender behind the forks, and it's a uh, quite a thick bolt, and that's also threaded, very good quality. And I like the design. Uh, again, I'm not a huge fender fan, but they did a really cool job. Again, on style points, this bike is just all kinds of fun. I just think it's really well done. Looks kind of like an off-road. Oh, this is super cool. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Now, here is the thing that doesn't work. It's got this weird little bend in it, and it came, the bolt came with it. Like, one thing cool is you don't have to, to, ascend, to put the spike together, I'm using air quotation marks, you don't have to scramble like you're unboxing um, and you get like this huge clear bag of weird parts and you're so confused. It's none of that. Like everything is attached the way it's supposed to be. This though is a bit of a fail. I can't, there's no way to figure out how this thing is supposed to go. It looks like it should kind of go like that, but then it just, the, the bolt is too big for those two holes. 
And yeah, if you're thinking possibly that hole as well, it that that bolt is too big for that too. It is it does show that it's threaded, but it doesn't go there. It doesn't go to the other one, not in the back one. I've tried them all. I cannot figure out how to make it work other than just having a smaller bolt, and then of course it would work perfectly. So if you're keeping tabs on the things that are, I would say the negatives, it'd be that rear fender bolt thing is a little odd. Not the end of the world, because you could fit, you could use another bolt and it will work. Uh, the other is the pedals. The folding pedals are kind of cheap. Kinda, and when you put your weight on them on the outer you know, edges, you can feel it bend. Um, and then the steering wheel thing is a little weird, I'll be honest. Hey, now this doesn't come with a bike. This I purchased, I told you guys I purchased this thing. Uh, this is the rear rack, and you can see the welding there. It, this attaches to the seat post, and people are like, hey, that weld, I don't know. Look at how well that's made. I mean, I'm not going to have a person ride behind there. My backpack, I'll weigh it, but I, I mean, it's. I'm thinking like six pounds at the most. So it should be just fine. And this bracketing system they have is very well made, and that is all metal. Everything there is a metal or some sort of aluminum, but um, it's very well machined. So again, another uh, another positive. Yeah, very happy with that. And it comes with like this double rubber stuff that you make sure it doesn't slip, I guess, on the uh, seat post. All right, so now let's uh, pump the tires up. These are MTBs. I'm not familiar with these, but they actually are very quiet. Um, using them for road commuting, I will do some off-roading test, off-road testing here uh, eventually once I break the bike in a bit. But uh, real easy to inflate the tires. They already came with about, I don't know, I'm just guessing around 10 PSI in the tires. Everything was like fully ready to go. All right, so now let's give it one close-up walk through here so you can see everything in great detail. Uh, here are the disc brakes. We've got the forks. And there's a little bit more of that glue. See, I'm able to scrape that piece off. All right, and there's the key. It comes with two keys. And that's the battery indicator right there. And again, the moment you turn the key on, the battery indicator tells you how much power there. There's the battery connector. Here's the computer. There's the horn and the light. That horn, by the way, will wake the dead. It's definitely great for commuting on a street, but for pedestrians, it's so overkill. <laughs> Just, yeah. Um, I'll have to demo that. I think I did that on the live stream that I did yesterday. So, um, yeah, it's just crazy loud. Here's another side. You can see the cable there for the brake. It's not hydraulic, but again, you get what you pay for. But this isn't a negative thing, right? They still slow you down. Now, we'll say this. New brakes take a little while to break in. It sounds redundant, but they do. Um, so you have to apply that pressure, and eventually it'll start to wear off. I think that, like initial uh, oil or machining oil or whatever they use to, to kind of make that happen. Here you can see the shock mid-drive or midway. Uh, there's the controlling unit. You can see the cables, the way they're threaded. Pedals. That's a, like a little stand when you fold it in half that it can kind of balance on it. And here's the, uh, you can see the rear motor. There's also the uh, brake for the rear. It's a nice, what I like too about the profile of that motor, the 350 watt, is it's not aggressive or huge. It doesn't look like this big old electric thousand watt motor. Uh, really well done. Here's the seat, seat post. Come on, get the lighting straight here, Kobe. And what else do we have? Yep, there's another angle of that. I'll be testing that shock out later too. Oh yeah, that little scratch back there, that actually came that way. So if you want to ding them for that, it's not terrible though. Here's the um, very strong and sturdy little uh, spring-loaded guess holder, whatever the technical term is. 
Shimano shifter or derailleur, I should say, for the uh, front. All right, so let's show you the charger. There's the green light. It took about two and a half hours, I think, from where I was putting everything together. And uh, that's where it, there's the little charge port hole. And then there's how it attaches itself to the, uh, to the bike. Okay, now here I'm just weighing the battery with the bag itself. It floats at about five pounds, almost exactly, 5.1. Okay, so now this is gonna be the bike I'm gonna weigh with the battery and the rear rack that I just added, which is like a pound. All right, it's settling around 63 pounds. So not bad overall, and it's quite nimble as a bike when you're riding it. All right, so let's wrap this up. In the positives, handlebar grips, really well made, very good quality, that was a big surprise. Uh, the seat, very comfortable, tires, quiet. Fenders, good design. They just missed it on the bolt in the back for the rear tire. The overall design of the entire bike, I love that it doesn't look electric. Uh, really cool the way they hid the battery in that front pocket. Uh, the weight overall of the bike is actually quite light, 63 pounds, totally decent. It has automatic cruise control, and that's something I'll show you later. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I like the way that's, that works. The speed, that's another thing you're gonna see. This thing gets up to 27, 28 miles an hour. And lastly, the kickstand. I don't know if you could see it in that video there, but it actually is really quiet and they've, they've actually put insulation. So when you kick it up, it doesn't make that loud, you know, weird sound. Um, it looks like that's actually gonna stay on really well. So um, that's a really impressive piece of it. All right, let's dip into the negatives now. There aren't many so far that I can tell, but, but, but I'll continue to expand on them as I find them. So far, definitely the pedals are the weak spot, followed by the rear bolt for the fender. Very minor and easily fixed, but I'm just calling out everything that I can identify thus far. But as far as the ride and everything else we'll get into in continuing videos, and I'll tell you this really quick, the big difference between a 750 watt so far that I can tell and a 350 is the obvious you have more torque so the 750 is going to be stronger to get you to the top speed doesn't mean that the 350 can't do the same and you're going to see that with this bike it's going to be impressive all right y'all stay tuned we'll continue to commute with this bike and i'll continue to post videos that's it for now take care bye